conversation. My name is Dave Whelan. For those of you that don't know me, I'm with the Edible Landscape Project. Over the next couple of hours, you're going to hear from a number of speakers who will share ideas and insights that can contribute to having a positive impact on the climate through our food choices, creating better outcomes in terms of our health, our economy, and ultimately our environment. Our hope for today is that you'll feel empowered to make one small change to positively impact climate through your food choices. The Edible Landscape Project, for a little bit of background, is a social enterprise, which means that our funding goes back into supporting our initiatives rather than to private shareholders. We're based here in Westport County Mayo with a local, regional and national remit to help people understand the connections between climate and food. All the great movements of history start with small individual local actions, which over time transform into mobilizations of people. The Edible Landscape Project is one such movement, connecting individuals, starting small but with a big message. That message is that we can solve this problem that is climate change, and that the solutions are much closer to hand than we might have imagined. There are plenty of steps that we can take at a community level to have a positive impact on our climate, and one initiative that we at the Edible Landscape Project are working on is called the Tree Towns Initiative. Starting here in Westport, and with your support, we want to plant hundreds of trees, fruit and nut trees. Firstly around the town and then further afield. I like to think, think of a tree as a time capsule, carrying a message through the centuries. Imagine if we could plant some trees to reverse the effects of climate change by drawing down carbon and send a message to future generations that we didn't stand idly by. Did you know over a 40 year period that a single tree will take a ton of carbon or more out of the atmosphere? Imagine what 200, 2000 or 200,000 trees could do. I think we can all agree that the climate discussion is sometimes confusing. It's a minefield of distorted language, of rhetoric, of anxieties. The climate is always changing. Glaciers are melting. Ice sheets are growing. It's very far away. It's someone else's problem. A little warming could have its upsides, right? Cows fart. No, they belch. Don't worry. Technology will solve the problem. Sea level is rising. And after all of that, hold on, we're going to go to Mars. Mars is very, very far away and it's very cold. And okay, we might agree that exploring Mars and other planets might be good, but we have a perfectly good world here. We just have to take care of it. We've progressed as human, a human species, of course, because we have attempted to harness nature. But it has been at the expense of biodiversity, at the expense of animals and plant species. And now nature is responding and the wall between humans and nature is crumbling. 30 years ago, a wall in Germany crumbled and the veil was finally lifted. The veil on climate change has now also lifted. We must change the, this path of destruction and inspire a new generation to action. And just as we were inspired 50 years ago to put men on the moon, we must now find the same spirit of exploration and find a new path for the world we already live in. We are storytellers, but we need to know now how to tell better stories. Not of the distant problem we must solve in a far off world, but of the local heroes and the clearer path through our climate challenged world. So how do we do this? Well, we must sit down together as communities, just like we're doing here today. We must break bread and tell stories because it is in conversation and connection that we can begin to solve this problem. The topic for today's conversation concerns climate change, food and our health, because all three are linked. Eight of the top 20 solutions to our climate change crisis are food and land management related. And we currently waste over 30% of the food we produce it's highly likely that most of us spend at least 300 euros a month on food, or maybe even more to feed our families. 
What if I was to tell you that on average, that 30% of wastage that we've spoken about, almost 100 euros basically goes into the bin. And you're paying to put it in the bin. And did you know that the closer your plate is to the source of your food, the better it is for your health, the economy and the planet? It's essential that we start reconnecting to the sources of our food. But how do we do this? Well, we have to start putting a greater value on it, supporting local, chemical-free and regenerative farmers in the process. And we saw a little bit about that on the video. And by extension, improving local livelihoods and communities. It also means working together with nature rather than against it. We can no longer fight nature with chemicals and expect that there will not be severe repercussions for our actions. We cannot continue to build walls against nature, or between peoples for that matter. Some say our food should be from chemical-free and regenerative agriculture. Some say we should adopt a plant-rich diet. Some say that the way we currently value nature needs revision, perhaps a revolution or an evolution in the way we think. We might be a small island, but we are part of the global movement of people, now mobilizing to take on the greatest challenge, because this is the greatest challenge we have ever faced. Our speakers today offer a different way of thinking about the world we inhabit. They will suggest that we must acknowledge the crisis we are facing and move forward with solutions. Instead of the so what, they're asking what if. What if we could do things a little differently? What if we could work with nature rather than against it? What if we could change minds by offering real solutions? What if you could be the change you'd like to see in the world? This is our climate conversation and the Edible Landscape Project hope that at the end of today, you'll be thinking, what if? Welcome, thank you.